Hi everyone, I'm Rita Peterson with Everything Homemade and I am going to dive into how to make baby food today. And this really scared me when I was a new mom. If you are new to, to my channel, I have six children. So my first child, it was really, really scary when I had to start feeding solids. Now that I'm on number six, it's no big deal. So I want to share what I've learned and give you some pointers. And since we've got to make baby food ain't away today, I figured this is a good time to film some of the process that we use to make food for Meadow. Now, Meadow is eight months old, so she is not quite um, at the finger food stage. She still likes things blended up. Um, I can have mashed, mashed banana and with a little bit of clumps, but she still likes things fairly smooth in texture. So a couple of things that I want to go through before you even dive into making baby food and some things that I wish I was told before I fed Orion and um, and some mistakes that I also made. So first thing is do some research. Some foods are really good as baby's first foods and some foods are not. The first thing that I would do is I would do research. There is so much information out there. Kind of get an overview at first. There are foods that are really good to feed at first and their foods are not. There's also so much opinion out there on what is right and what is wrong that it is actually mind boggling. So I'm gonna share what I do. That doesn't mean that that's the only way to do it. It is not. This is what I do. I'll tell you why I do it. And you can take that information from there and, and take some out or say, hey, I don't really want to do that. Then do something else. But I am here to share what, in my experience, what I do and, and how my children thrive on it. Now, first thing is, there is a list kind of in my own head of foods that I start with and foods that I avoid. So let's go through a couple things of foods that you should avoid, in my opinion. Anything acidic. Basically, what I find over the years, because children teeth can start teething at four months old, sometimes earlier and of course later, that first year when they teeth, it seems to mess up their system. They get sometimes a lot of diarrhea, they can get puffy cheeks, they can get fever, they can get stuffed nose, they can get, um, you know, almost like, like a cold, cold cyst symptoms. And feeding acidic foods, one, is really hard on your baby's digestive system because it is so new. And two, it causes acidic poo and it is so nasty and it burns their bombs and you've got tons of problems there. So I totally avoid tomatoes. I totally avoid pineapple. I totally avoid any kind of citrus for them. So acidic, just I completely avoid it. Okay, I may introduce tomato sauce, like if I, when they get into their finger food stage and I'm, let's say, make some spaghetti and meat sauce or something, but that's not until like 12 months, okay? So the, basically that first year I totally avoid any acidic food because it is just not kind to their system. The other thing to avoid is raw honey. Um, it can cause an allergic reaction in, in their systems. Totally avoid that for babies under age one. The other thing that um, can cause allergic reactions is strawberries. Uh, strawberries is a 50-50. It may cause a reaction, it may not. So I kind of avoid strawberries as their first foods. And if everything's going well, then I will introduce strawberries around that 10 months of age without any issue at all. Dairy can be problematic at first. So I, again, I lay off the dairy till about that eight, nine months. Now I um, have raw dairy because we do have a milk cow so I make my own yogurt I make my own cheese I make you know all the byproducts so the dairy is really easy to to digest and we also have goats 
So we use goat's milk and when the sheep come on board, we use sheep milk as well. So we got quite a bit of different kind of dairy between cow's milk, sheep milk and goat milk. So I start around that nine months where I give them homemade yogurt um, it, and stuff like that. So you can err on the side of caution there, but I never introduce it as baby's first foods until the digestive system is totally up and running properly. The other thing that I highly stress, not as baby's first foods, is banana. Banana can cause constipation, like you would not believe, in an immature digestive system. So you want to make sure that your baby is pooing regularly, that has no problem with the solids, then you can introduce banana. And I only need to introduce about, you know, like, like an inch of banana, I break it off and I mash it up at first, little, 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 before I, let's say, mash up a whole banana. The other food that I don't start with is grains. And the reason behind that is grains naturally are very hard to digest. Even us adults or children with, with digestive systems that are already, you know, up to par, it is hard for us to digest the grains. So. I personally don't believe in first foods being any kind of grain, whether that is rice, whether that is oats, whether that is wheat, what any type of grain, because it is harder to digest. So I always start with items that have already natural enzymes, natural, um, that are fresh, that are ready to go, that are easy on the stomach. And sometimes my frame of mind goes, okay, if my stomach is empty, let's say, you know, you're recovering from, let's say a stomach flu or something, or you haven't eaten for a while because of some kind of illness. Do you ever just go and eat tons and tons of cereal or tons and tons of bread? You don't. It weighs heavy in your stomach. It's hard to digest. I look at an immature digestive system. I'm thinking, okay, you need to start with foods that are easy to digest. And therefore, if they're easy to digest, it is easy for it to pass through the intestines and out and really, really make it easier on the baby to process its food. So that is why I'm not starting with pablum and I'm not starting with a lot of the grain products that are sometimes out on the market right now. Another thing that I want to go over is yes, I don't feed grains as first baby food, but that doesn't mean I don't feed them at all. I wait till their digestive system is mature enough. So Basically, my cue is when they start fingering food. So when they're able to pick up food and put it in their mouth and chew it somehow. That is my cue that I can take, you know, a piece of bread, cut it up in small little cubes so they can pick it up, put it in their mouth. Then they can eat rice. Sometimes then I make, you know, some pasta. But at first, what I want to stress and really make clear, at first, I don't feed them the grains because it's hard to digest. As their system matures and they're able to digest the food better, then I have no problem feeding them rice and everything else and noodles and breads that we normally eat. They start, then I start incorporating what we eat and give it to them in some, instead of something a little more special. So it's all about starting small and easy at first and gradually working your way to what the rest of the family is eating. Another area that I want to touch on is feeding your baby protein. And so when I start with easy foods like the fruits and the vegetables, it's really easy on the digestive system. And in my experience, what I find is blending up meat they don't really care for the consistency or my children haven't really cared for the consistency of it. And anytime I, I introduce protein, I actually start with egg yolk first. Now, not the white. You never, ever, ever want to feed egg whites to your baby as it may cause an allergic reaction. And that's all the way up to the first year. So how I prepare the eggs is I fry it up. And, but I leave the yolk running. And I'm using my free range chicken eggs 
that I have here on the farm to do this and I basically just kind of scoop out the yolk and sometimes I'll mix it in with the mango a little bit just to give that protein boost but I'm not going crazy I might do this every second or third day the biggest thing for me is because I am still breastfeeding my breast milk is high in protein and it is the perfect food and what I am doing is feeding solids and supplementing and changing you know her from drinking to eating solid foods also so I'm more concerned about getting the digestive system going and by the time she's eight nine ten months depending on the child you're already blending up meals such as soup that has already some protein in it and it gets blended up or are you starting to you know she's starting to finger food and my favorite times when they finger food because then I can cut up little pieces of meat and they can pick up let's say little pieces of thinly sliced roast beef or a little bit of cubed chicken or something like that where they can actually already chew it and eat it and that for me makes it a whole lot easier than trying to blend up meat that isn't very palatable I find at first and so that is my um, opinion on protein and you may differ in that and that's okay and everyone does something a little bit different and so for me at first fruits and vegetables and then we work our way to something a little more clumpy and then we work our way to normal meal times and to finger food and then the protein is increased while my best breast milk decreases because I'm starting to wean her off more so let's take a look again let's go back again to um, where I'm going to talk a little bit about bananas and get back on track with the fruits and vegetables. Banana can cause a very severe constipation and this was one of my biggest mistakes with Orion. He was my first child and I fed him banana thinking, hey, this is great. I mash it up nice and simple. I fed it, fed too much too fast and he had severe constipation where I take him all off solids and just breast milk just feed him breast milk until it was able to get through a system it was a horrific time you never want to watch your baby go through constipation it is uncomfortable it was just broke my heart and I basically learned the hard way so after that I really dived into a little bit more research when it came to baby food the other thing that I don't start at first but I introduce later is berries now like raspberries and blackberries are not good for babies first foods just because they have the seeds in them and when you blend them up they're so runny um, it just seems to be a very strong flavor that not as many children like so I kind of wait until they're a little bit older where I can mix it with some apple sauce actually in it to thicken it and you have the flavor of the berries the other thing is blueberries and Saskatoons. When you blend them up, they are problematic as baby's first foods because of the skins. The skins don't blend as smooth and your baby can choke. Now some ba children will be a little bit different. Some babies will be okay with a little bit of skin and other babies won't. So I just kind of wait until, until about that eight, nine months when I can flavor yogurt with them, blend it, and they can handle a little bit more um, chunks light like small small bits in the food so they don't choke what are some really good foods to start with mango is my favorite ultimate very first foods for babies for a couple of reasons one I can feed it raw two I can get it either in season or most grocery stores will sell it already cut up frozen so I can thaw it out and blend it when you when you peel a mango and you cut off the wonderful ripe flesh it is just the perfect consistency so when you blend it you don't need to add water you just blend it up smooth, either with a hand blender or with a blender or a magic bullet or whatever you've got to blend with you it just blends up perfectly smooth the proper consistency and it is just jam-packed with vitamins and nutrients and you can feed it raw so then it's really easy on the digestive system and what I do is when I introduce this to to my babies I feed 
I bought a tablespoon at first. So let's say I wake up in the morning, I feed Meadow some breast milk, we wait about you know half an hour getting breakfast ready, I set her up in the high chair and I give her about a tablespoon and that is it. And the next day again, so the rest of that day she doesn't get any solids. Then the next day again in the morning I give her bait her some mango again. The, what you want to do is not switch it up so much at first because you want to make sure that what you're feeding they aren't allergic to and you always introduce new foods in the morning. If you introduce a new food in the evening and let's say it doesn't sit right with them then their whole night is messed up and then they sleep miserable so you always want to do it in the morning. And when you introduce one food item at a time you know then what food let's say they have an allergic reaction to. Again, not every child is the same. So just because one one of my children can eat something, the other child might not. So this is why I always start mango. Now I will feed her mango for like two or three weeks straight without any other food. So just in the morning, mango. Just in the morning again, mango. And what that does, it slowly transitions the digestive system to solids. So you don't have the constipation. It's a gradual process. You don't want to rush it. Remember, these di their digestive systems have never ever saw seen solid food. So it's got to, I like to take it easy and not rush this process. Now, what ages can you start? Now, there is definitely nothing written in stone. Some babies, Meadow was a very mature baby. She was born at nine, four pounds. Her, she was ready for solids at three and a half months old. So I started very early. Orion, I started at five months old. Um, Nova and Grace were around that six months. Ocean, she was a picky girl and she did not like any food blended. Um, she, I basically introduced solids at around nine months old because she would not take anything that was blended. It was frustrating, but like I said, every child is different. So she was ready at nine months old. So there is no, you know, every child needs to start at six months. No, because sometimes you have preemie babies. Sometimes you have babies that are born on time, but their, their digestive system is not ready and they're not showing signs that they are ready. Meadow was already lunging for food at three and a half months old and it was a blessing because she's such a big baby to get that little bit, um, something heavier in her belly than just my breast milk. And so you, what I like to do is just Watch my, watch my baby, pay attention to the signs that, that they are giving you and knowing that, yes, hey, I can start solids early, I can start them later. There's no right or wrong. I mean, you're gonna start sometime, it's just a matter of when. And you wanna do it slowly. So after uh, two to three weeks, um, I kinda go, go through my mental checklist. Is Meadow you pooing regularly? Is she having no problem pooing? Is her her poo you know soft? It's not like little rocks. You definitely don't want little rocks kind of you know because then then you she you need to up your breast milk or decrease your solids. You're going too fast and let the the digestive system clean itself out a bit. And if you know I go through all these things because you know I want to make sure that that she's not in pain that everything is going very smoothly so let's say you fed too fast what what do I do if that happens then I lay off the the solid food and I go breast milk and I continue to breast milk till we have a nice you know soft good consistency poo and she's pooing regularly then I'll reintroduce it but less amounts and slower until we get a really good um, poo pooing schedule there and I do this daily so if I notice that hey she's got such a tough poo coming no no more let's breast milk more but if you're going about a tablespoon a day nice and slow then that doesn't happen so Really, I really want to stress that because I wasn't told that when I was a new mom. I kind of had to figure this out the hard way. 
Now, after mango, I like applesauce. Applesauce, so I take an apple and I peel it. You always want to peel things with a heavier um, peel on them because if you would just cut up this apple and put it in a pot and cook it, the peel does not blend smooth and is a choking hazard to your baby. So I peel the apples, cut off the flesh, and I just gently simmer it for about 15 minutes till it's soft, blend it up, and wonderful applesauce as quick as that. The other thing that, that so we're gonna make some applesauce, that's why I have some apples here. We're also gonna make one of Meadow's favorite dishes, and that is sweet potato with carrot. So we're gonna cut up and process the sweet potato. We're also going to add carrots. So I blend these two up together and it makes a wonderful combination. And again, all these foods blend up smooth. They got a beautiful consistency. The other thing that Metal loves is sweet, I'm sorry, uh, butternut squash and applesauce. Now squash and apples is like a marriage. They just go really, really good together. And so we take apple and we take butternut squash. We cook the butternut squash. So I cut it in half, take the seeds out, put it upside down on the the cut side down on the on a lasagna dish, put in the oven under 350 Fahrenheit for about an hour. Depending on the size of squash, you take the fork as long as it goes in nice, nice and easy, it's done. And you can I then I scoop that out, put it in my blender. I take already made applesauce, put that in. You can do a half and half, that's usually what I like. And the applesauce will naturally sweeten the butternut squash, but give it a very nice flavor. And my other rule of thumb is, is if I can't eat it, my baby shouldn't eat it. If it doesn't taste good, then why should I? So all these combinations, I would have no problem eating myself because they taste good. And that's what I really like about about making baby food myself is that it's fresh. I know the ingredients that's a good, that are going in. I saw the process and I can say, yes, I. this is totally fresh and good. Now I'm making a huge pot. Like I have a big pot here, a nice big pot that I we're gonna do this in. And of course that's way too much, but we will freeze it in. So we freeze it into ice cube um, trays and Every ice cube tray is about a tablespoon of food. So we take out, let's say, 10, 10 ice cubes for two or three days, because remember, she is eight months, so she's eating more than just a tablespoon of food, and I'm feeding her breakfast, lunch, and supper. So we put it in ice cube trays, and it freezes wonderful. We, overnight, the next morning, we pop it out, put it in bags, label it, in the freezer it goes. And it only takes a very small amount of time to thaw some ice cubes out. Well, in this case, food cubes. So there's some ideas. So some some more ideas, and I'm gonna put a chart here and listing some ideas with what to feed and what not to feed. So mango works awesome, and you can definitely feed that and blend it up raw. Just make sure it's peeled. Plums definitely work, work great. Again, peel it, and you can blend it up. Um, plums is also really nice mixed with applesauce. You can cook the two together, just make sure both are peeled. You also want to remember that any kind of time you deal with fruit, you want it as ripe as possible. It's easier to digest, it is sweeter to the palate, and it just tastes better. Pears is another awesome, really good first foods to peel it, make sure it's really ripe, blend it up, and feed it. A really good broth if you want to make a nice nice bone broth don't be scared to you know make it like you normally do with onions and celery and anything like that and a little bit of broth goes a long long way and it tastes really good and easy on the system you can um, also if you need to thin out something using broth instead of water you're adding nutrients because babies don't eat as much a nice broth to um, change the consistency of something is a good idea. If you don't have broth, there's always water. Sweet potato works awesome. Squash is an awesome 
also awesome and not just butternut squash you can do acorn squash I've done spaghetti squash again when you blend it up they all blend smooth and they all have to be cooked pre-cooked ahead of time carrot is great I don't worry about um, peeling carrots I just cook them up with it the peel is so so small in this case it's not a thick peel it blends up smooth and and with carrots it's good to have all that good fiber from the um, skins a vegetable soup if once you know your child gets on good solids you can make a vegetable soup with and and blend it up really nice and smooth flavor is the key remember in my book if I don't want to eat it if it tastes gross then the baby your baby should not gonna want to eat it very well either so these are some really good foods to start with and after you just you know if they get into that finger food stage you can cut up some cheese you can introduce yogurt you can you know start start blending up your suppers right I like really like soups for a while because there's all that broth and I can blend them up so I start introducing um, you know blended up rice and this and that but this you know is more to jumpstart you to start your solids to where to start with and 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 so again foods to avoid acidic foods tomatoes oranges grapes lemons limes that kind of stuff avoid pineapple um, no strawberries bananas at first now bananas I introduce once their system is good so about a month a month and a half half of introducing salts then I, I, I introduce banana because bananas are really really good first first foods just not the very first foods okay so about a month and a half into feeding banana is great again small amounts at first to make sure constipation doesn't happen so now with that being said I hope I gave you some really good pointers some really good ideas let's dive into the actual making a baby food okay so we are going to prepare the baby food now I got a couple things going on here we're going to do apples first so just to kind of you know go through exactly how to do this so basically I am going to just peel the apples and these peels are great in the compost too now when I'm making baby food you want to try to use organic as you can if you can't it's not the end of the world but if you do have access to organic then that is the best okay so I take the peel off and when you are making baby food even if you leave a little bit of peel on it is really important that you get it all because it is a choking hazard okay especially with babies you got to think about it they don't they know how to drink they don't know how to really swallow anything that's lumpy and that's why I go over it again after I peel it to get anything that I have missed okay so I'm just gonna there's some bruises here if you hear meadow in the background that's her with the kids playing with her while I tape this and I want to just say thank you to ocean as she is filming right now so this here so basically I take the apples the apples and I just cut it off just like that and I just throw them in throw them in like this because I'm just simmering them and I throw them in this one has a little bit of a bruise here so I'm just going to cut that off here and so this one has a little bit of this of um, the core and I'm just going to make a little triangle and take it out okay so again and I'm not too worried about coring this perfectly okay 
because I've got a lot of takers for these here. So there you have it. We've got apple here. So we're gonna just add a little bit of water in here so we don't burn the bottom and then we are going to set it to a boil. Well, a simmer. So when it comes to sweet potato, you need to peel it. So I'm gonna cut the ends off first, just like this. And sweet potato is a little bit harder to peel, but it's not too bad. So peel away. Now I have a rabbit, so some of these little peelings are gonna go to the rabbit. The other thing that, that you see here is gonna go to the chickens because the chickens go crazy off of peels. So nothing is wasted. Now we are done peeling, I'm just going to set that off to the side and I'm going to take my sweet potato and now I'm going to take my carrots and I have a pot right here, okay? So this is just a big glass pot. So with my carrots, I'm going to take off the ends and I am just going to basically chop them up and throw them into the pot. And I'm going to do that for all these carrots. Now, I have about, what did I have? Two, four, six. So I have six carrots here um, for with the sweet potato. It just gives it a real nice flavor when it comes to mixing these two. And she really likes them combined. Then just eating the carrots alone, she likes the sweet potato and the carrots together. And you got to remember too, when you're making baby food, not all babies like the same foods, okay? Some children, you know, like peas, blended peas. Other children don't. I have, don't have much luck with blended peas. Some children, you know, love sweet potato. Others don't. So if your child doesn't like something, no big deal. Try something else, you know? Every child's a little different. When I was a baby, I hated, hated blent up peas. Fact is, my mom says that I spit them right out. So I dislike peas. And in fact is, Annika, she hates blended up peas as a baby. And to this day, she doesn't like eating cooked peas at all. So. That's another thing that I didn't mention on the list is peas. Yes, you can do peas also. Okay, so we're just chopping this all up and we'll get it into the pot. There you have it, everything is chopped and ready for cooking. So we have a nice pot of sweet potato and carrots, and we got a little bit of apple in here. So now what do we do? Well, we need to add a little bit of water. Todd in the fridge. Yeah. Okay, so we need to add a little bit of water into the apples. And I am basically just, you know, a very, very little, little bit, just enough to have them in there. I hope you guys can see that. Basically enough to cook them without burning the bottom. And you're just going on a light simmer. Now I got about two cups of water in here. I'm gonna just pour it in there. And, and I really want my level up here because this here will use quite a bit of water and I will need it in a way for blending up. So with that being said, we are going to take these now to my stovetop. So we're going to put them on here. I'm going to put them on medium high heat and basically I'm going to wait until they get to that boil 
and then I am just going to get them to the proper temperature where they're just nice and simmering. Now the apples, once it hits that boil and I turn them down, it's only going to take 15 minutes. So I put 15 minutes timer, I take a fork, when they come out nice and soft, all done. Then I will blend that up and I will show you that. So, and the other thing is with the other one, I am, same thing, going to get it to the boil and basically wait till it's done. Now this pot here is going to take about an hour of nice gentle cooking. So that is it. I'm going to let these cook and I'll see you back when they are done and ready for blending. So the apples are ready. Take a look. They're nice and soft. Very easy to stab. See that? So what we're going to do is I am just using a hand um, blender. Just really simple. I love this for baby food. You can also, like I said, use any kind of blender that you have. This is the recommended um, container that came with it. Anyway, it works really good for baby food. So basically, I'm just going to, I am just going to put the apples into my container. Now they've been sitting here cooling down for about 15 minutes after I cook them. So they're not right hot. And then I'm just going to blend them up. Okay. And you can see there's enough water already in here from the apples and a little bit of water that I put in while they were cooking. So there you have it. And so I have this empty container that I'm just going to pour this applesauce in. And this is what she's going to eat for lunch. I just put her down for a snooze. So she'll, she'll be having this for a later lunch. And so now this is just going to cool off. Um, it's warm, it's not hot. Um, so I'm just going to put the lid on. I'm gonna just leave it on the counter here so it doesn't get cold and that is how simple it is to make applesauce. Now like I said before in this video you can mix the applesauce with different kind of fruits and applesauce is a nice thickener so when she's a bit older I'll be mixing applesauce with blueberry or applesauce with, with raspberry or applesauce and butternut squash or any other kind of squash. It's just a natural sweetener and it just makes it way more, um, makes it easier to eat, gives it lots of flavor and is healthy on top of it. to blend up the squash and carrot mix. Now I already have the mix in the blender and I'm going to use my blend tech because we have a lot more to blend at once. Now with this mixture you need to add a little bit of water just so it gets the proper consistency. So I have about two, three quarters cup of water. I'm just going to put it in here and blend it up and then I will judge the consistency from there. Perfect. So now we have baby food. Just like that. So what we're going to do is we are going to just let this cool down as it is fairly hot. And I'm going to put a little bit in a container for supper tonight and then we are going to and then we are going to freeze the rest into the freezer. So this is the next stage. We have the mixture blended and now it is time to prep for freezing. Now Meadow here is going to give me a hand and we are going to basically take the mixture and put it in ice cube trays. Now you can get special containers and, and um, 
really anything will work, but I prefer ice cube tra ice cube trays because I know that each cube is a good tablespoon of food. I can mix, I can take a little bit of this out, a little bit of that out, and everything is just easy to thaw and quick. Right? Right. What you need to do is very simply, I just take a scoop and I put it in the trays. I don't put any kind of oil in or anything like that because once it freezes, all you need to take is a little knife and just just um, go underneath it and to pop them out and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to work with my left hand here. And when you're a mom, you've got to improvise sometimes. Okay, so what, what we need to do, and I just smooth the top, just like that. And I mean, it doesn't look pretty. It doesn't need to, you're just freezing in the food. And it goes like that. So we will do all of the ice cube trays like this. And, and then we'll put them in the freezer by the evening or the next morning we pop them out put them into bags and they are good to go in the freezer and we have food for the rest of the week for meadow so we are the next day and this is what it looks like coming out of the freezer so you can see they're well frozen and this is exactly what we want now there's a couple of ways to do this and i've got nova here gonna give me a hand Sometimes depending on the type of baby food that you that you have frozen, it is easy just to um, you know go back and forth with your ice cubes and pop them out like ice cubes would be. But in this case, this is a lot um, I guess not as flexible. So the other method is Nova, let's show them, is you either take a knife looking like this, or sometimes you can use just a butter knife depending on what works well but what we do is we go into our cubes and we basically basically kind of almost pre-cut them a bit so they pop out just like that okay so then they pop out really nice just fire them right into the bag and so we will just do this for each one and and um like I said, it depends on on what kind of baby food you have. Depends on the technique that I use. And with the knife, it goes pretty quick. Just watch your fingers, you guys. Always just, you know, use safety. Don't ever put your knife in and your fingers are over here because you can slip with your knife and cut yourself. Always hold your hand away from it. I'm holding here. I'm using my knife here on this side and I'm going into the cue. So if I do end up slipping, it's not going to hurt myself. Okay, so same with Nova here. She's always working against the blades on this side, her hand is on this side, and if she slips, she's going to slip off this direction. That, you just basically take them out of the ice cubes and put them in the bag. Then what we're going to do is just take this bag and we're going to, um, a lot of times I label, I just put some either right on the bag or I use a piece of, piece of painter's tape and a write on the painter's tape so I'm not permanently marking up my bags because I do like to reuse the bags as much as possible. And I just put that baby food in the freezer and when I want baby food, I just grab however many cubes I want. They thaw really, really fast and therefore I can have variety in my freezer. And let's say I'm running out of the house. Sometimes that happens where, you know, oh my, we got to get out of the house now. Meadow needs a feeding. Sometimes I feed her in the vehicle in her car seat. And I just put a few cubes in a container and I just throw them in the diaper bag and off I go. By the time her next feeding comes, the cubes are already thawed and I have baby food easily right on hand. So I hope this helps everyone how to make baby food, what I do, some ideas, some tricks, some techniques um, to, to get you on the right start on making baby food. I thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.